Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to review the Chewy HeroBook Pro. We've already had Chewy on the channel a few times, covering two laptops, as well as a mini PC. Each of them were easily recommended, but this time, things could be a little different. At only $185, can this laptop be any good? And who is the target audience? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. So this was sent to us directly from Chewy. They insisted we cover the HeroBook Pro, and even paid us for the trouble in testing and making this video. This is the box. Let's experience the power. Moving to the back, we have a sticker. This tells us that we have the 8GB RAM and 256GB SSD model. <gasps> the laptop is protected by a polystyrene surrounding, so it doesn't get knocked about by the postman. Inside we have the power adapter. This one has a barrel jack, and it's good for 12 volts, 2 amps. There's one of these. What the heck is that? Seems to be an adapter of some sort. We'll find out later. A small cardboard box is inset into the polystyrene. And inside, manuals and warranty cards. I sometimes hold Wesley down by placing a potato on him. I am John Luke. Check my chest here. <laughs> And in here, we've got a laptop. First impressions, it's pretty thin. And at 1.3 kilograms, it's quite light. Not super modern, noting the curves on the outside. And there's a non-invasive Chewy logo on the back. Let's take a look at the I.O. Got a USB 3.0, a power jack, a BIOS reset, and a mini HDMI port. So you can plug it up to a TV or a projector. On the back, there's no exhaust holes. And on the right, we've got a micro SD slot, headphone jack, and a USB 2.0 port. Let's take a look underneath. Again, there are no holes for cooling, but we do have four rubber feet. They're not too tall, but at least they'll stop us scratching the table. There's also a small area here which we can easily get access to, and this houses the M2 SSD. Let's open her up. I got some tracing paper. Woohoo! So this laptop here looks very similar to an older MacBook Air. And with its plastic construction and these largest bezels, this laptop kind of gives a retro vibe. In the corners, there's a small rubber nipple to protect the screen, and a camera in the center. The keyboard works using a rubber membrane, and even though it does feel cheap, it's functional. However, the keys are not lit, and they may be set in too low, as we've had some keys that get stuck underneath the plastic. Moving on to the trackpad, this one is fairly large. If you push down at the bottom, there is a click for left and right buttons, but it's much better to left click by tapping, or right click by tapping with two fingers. On the first boot, we'll be greeted to the window setup screen. It asks us a few questions regarding language, country, and which keyboard we're using. While a computer tried to communicate with us, it took around 10 to 15 minutes to get to the window screen. As we mentioned earlier with the trackpad, two fingers is a right click, and one is for left. You can push down at the bottom, but it's quite awkward and not very ergonomic. Here's the system settings. We have the N4020 CPU, 8GB of memory, on Windows 10 Home. To activate it, all we need to do is go online, and we can do so by easily connecting to the Wi-Fi network. But as we have Chrome on the desktop, we're going to check for malware using three different tools. And with their latest definitions, they state that this laptop is squeaky clean. Always ready for tea time. Now we can use Windows Update. But as we have entry-level hardware, it takes a long time. We left Windows Update to run, and it was stuck on this screen for about two hours. When in doubt, turn it off and on again, and then the process can continue. Then finally, we're updated. Moving on to the specs now, this cheap laptop has a 1080p IPS display. It's got a Celeron N4020, which is dual core and can boost up to 2.8 gigahertz. The thing is, this CPU is four years old now, and at release, it was designed to be power efficient and affordable. Many of the other features are also of last generation, such as the M2 SATA SSD, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also the USB 3.0. But at the current price point of $175, it's probably better not to judge it on specs, but to see what it can do. When installing things to a new laptop, we usually start with Ninite.com. It's a website full of free tools, such as paint packages, virus checkers, and Office. Simply select everything you wish to install, press Get Your Ninite, and then run the file to install everything easily. So we can use things like LibreOffice to write our documents, make spreadsheets, or we can make some graphics with Krita. Unfortunately, on this computer it takes ages to load, and as it's only dual core, it lacks power, so it only stick to simple tasks not involving any filters.
Using it for internet browsing should be no problem, but as the specs are fairly low, it doesn't feel snappy, and having three or four tabs really does slow it down. We check video streaming, and HDCP 2.3 is working out the box in Chrome. That means we got the AOK -OK for Amazon Prime and Netflix. And when it comes to YouTube, the combination of low spec and lack of AV1 codec gives us many skipped frames, even in 1080p. And if we push it to track 4K, it really struggles. Here are some benchmarks, and these scores are pretty low. It beats the Pi 4 in the single core score, but it loses out in multi as we only have two cores. Here's the pass mark score, and it failed during the 3D test, so 3D mark will have no chance. But here's some disk mark. Faster than a mechanical drive, but far slower than an NVMe. To test out some games, we're going to use Steam, but using the interface on this laptop feels slow and sluggish, not snappy at the slightest. For example, we click on the library. Wait in, wait in, wait in, wait in, wait in, wait in, bacon, bacon, yum, 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 yum. Yeah, pretty slow. After downloading and installing the games, we can connect our Bluetooth controller and let's play. First up, Among Us, and this works fine in 1080p. But let's change things up with the domestic dog. But unfortunately, Streets of Rage 4 can't run at full speed with the graphics that are low. And even Return to Monkey Island is at 20 to 30 FPS. Hey, Wally. Well, well, well. Look what the surf was. Is Left 4 Dead 2, 720p low? And if you wanted to see a modern FPS, here's Bolt Gun. And this laptop really does fall on its face. But to get around the poor specs, what we could do is use this laptop to stream games. So I'll just link up to my main rig here, and we can play any of these games anywhere in the house. Performance depends on the main rig, but nowadays services like Xbox Game Pass can provide this online. Easy does it. I am going to get a cup of tea with Beverly. Let's take a look at the expansion port. To get in, all we need to do is take out these two screws, and then we can flip it open. To remove the drive, we need to take out one screw, then use the guitar pick to pry it up and slide it out. The included SSD is a 256GB air disk, which should be seen as generic and probably not very reliable. Again, this is an extremely cheap laptop, and you get what you pay for. If you wanted to upgrade to a better brand, you can do so very easily, and this supports both 2280 and 2242-sized SSDs. To use the smaller ones, we need to use that little adapter we mentioned earlier. We tried the PCIe NVMe, but it wasn't detected at BIOS, so only M2 SATA SSDs are compatible. Batasera Linux runs from the SSD flawlessly, transforming this into a retro gaming laptop. Very similar to a RetroPie, we've got the systems here, and even with this two-year-old version of Batasera, both the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi are working without issue. So let's see what we can play. Arcade systems like CPS and Neo Geo will be running here full speed, but when it comes to 3D titles like Tekken 3, they're running around 57 FPS. 8, 16 and 32-bit consoles for the most part will run fine. But heavier games like Dead or Alive 2 for the Dreamcast requires you to lower the graphics settings to get to full speed. In quick menu, change alpha sorting to fast, and we're good to go. Here's OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast, and while it is playable, we can't say that this system can run all PSP games super well. Saying that, this computer handles it much better than a Pi 4, probably due to it having a better GPU. And here's some PlayStation 2. While Gradius 5 is one of the easier PlayStation 2 games to emulate, it slows to a crawl as soon as you see any special effect. To be honest, with a keyboard at hand, it's probably much better to emulate a home computer. Gym power on the Amiga is usually one of the heavier games to run, and we have it here at full speed. Then if we add a mouse to the mix, we have a perfect rig for ScumVM. And we can use the keyboard for the games that need it. If you use a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, we can output video to a TV or projector. And while it did display in 4K, the computer was woefully underpowered. If you do want to use this for external video, you better pull down the resolution to 1080p or even 720p. 
I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. This laptop is extremely affordable, and at that price we've got an IPS monitor, comes with a legit version of Windows, and it's completely silent. Unfortunately, the hardware really does let this one down, and it doesn't take much for the computer to feel rather sluggish. It's better to see this from a range of use cases. If you need a computer for light web browsing and office work, perhaps game streaming or emulating old systems, then you can safely consider using this laptop. But if you're a heavier user, wants to create art, music or video, or even game, avoid at all costs. If you're willing to spend a little more on a budget laptop, there's a Gemmybook X Pro, which we reviewed in a different video. There's an N100 quad-core CPU under the hood, and it makes it much snappier than the HeroBook Pro. The keyboard is also much improved, as is the internal camera. And the quality difference is night and day. That chicken is very attractive. Thanks, I guess. So who is the target audience? It's someone who doesn't play games and needs a PC for light office work. Or it could be used as a dedicated laptop for retro gaming and Scum VM. As we finish off, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we make video reviews, guides, and help fix them cheap arcade boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you'd like to support our work, please consider joining, or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next video. Oh, and here's some other videos that you can check out. Ta-ra! Come meet me at the Mega Ball Car Park at 6, if you want a good time.